So glad to have you here today. I know that a number of our people are out today, and I, I kind of was expecting it uh, because, uh, again, let's just be transparent. There's a, there seems to be a, uh, I don't want to say you were, use the word gas shortage, but there's a gas worry. Is that, would that be a better term to say? Um, for us in North Carolina, and so I just knew, I knew starting off, uh, I knew by about Thursday, uh, there was just going to be a number of people who probably used to be joining us online, and that's that's great. We're glad that they're able to do that. We're glad that we're slaving off of that. I want to go ahead, and uh, I've, been, I've been looking forward to and dreading this lesson, probably since we started the whole process on unity. But, can I tell you something? If we're unwilling... To talk about the hard things, it gives us no it gives us no way to talk about the easy things. Okay, and sometimes the church we got to talk about hard, difficult things. It's what God's called us to do. Membership of our church is one of them. Okay, let's just be transparent. Uh, we live in a world that. Uh, I want to say that I want to say there's two kinds of thought, but there really is. You have the uh, you have the people, you have, you have people, and I love them to death, because they were probably, they're part of my family, that really do believe that, uh, you know, the, when you read in Revelation, it says that God opened the other book, that that actually meant the church role, okay? Um, that, you know, that if you're not on the church role, you're not going to get to go to heaven. I kid you not, I know people like this, you probably do too. They probably grew up holding this, I want you to know that. Um, I'm just sharing that with you. Um, my my grand my grandmother grew up holiness, and if you don't know what that means. That denomination, they, if you didn't show up for revival, they they not only kicked you out of church, but they well, they questioned your salvation. Okay, just know that. You also have the other movement, which is well, why should I join a church? Right? Can I not just be religious? No, me and Jesus are friends. And I want you to know that answer is wrong as well. So, in a very good Baptist custom, I'm probably, if I offend you, I hate it. Okay? That's the only way I know how to say it. Because we got to talk about membership. we got to talk about it from the Bible. But to talk about it from the Bible, I believe we got to talk about some of the different kinds, right? Let me give you a quote by Henry Ford. And this is what's been running through my mind the entire time talking about membership. Now, remember, this is an introduction. At some point in time, not this calendar year, because I already know what I'm speaking on from now until about Christmas. But we're going to dive into membership. Really dive into membership. Okay? This is an introduction. Henry Ford says this. He says, if you, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. Right? If you're just constantly doing the same thing over and over again, my, my favorite saying is, is from, I think it's from Einstein, and insanity is doing the same things over and over again and expecting a different outcome. Right? So let me share with you uh, some of the member, uh, some of uh, some classic membership that we have to study in a church, right? Now, I'm not going to know this is not the what I would consider a core, a regular attender, okay? These are all fringe memberships, right? Let's talk about people. Number one, uh, the person, they follow Jesus, but they're not into organized religion. Remember one of these people? They thought that it, they feel like they are, uh, they'd rather go on a hike on Sunday so they can be close to God, right? I don't need to go to a church building. Me and, Je me and Jesus are okay. You ever start? Again, yeah. talk about the people. Uh, church number, uh, person number two, I call the church hopper, and actually probably a better term is called the church shopper. They're probably in church every Sunday, but they're here one week, they're there one week, they're not really anywhere invested at all, right? You're, again, not talking about anyone that, not looking at anyone, I'm trying my best, I'm looking at anybody, I'm staring you down, thinking this is you. Uh, though, there's actually a longer version of this. Of the church shopper, and can I tell you what I call them? This is not you know, nothing official. You know what I call them? I call them the lost dogs. You want to know why? They're here for about a year. They're there for a year. They just want to go somewhere where they get their ears scratched. Maybe somebody listens to them, 
And as soon as someone doesn't listen, what happens? They're gone. You're stuck. What happens? Gone. Person number three. Um, they found a great ministry in the church. Just one. And they really like that. And as long as that's happening, I'm there. But not really involved in the church as a family. Person number four. Loves the uh, loves the preaching at the church, but you know what? That's they 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 even leave. Of the, I call them the church ninjas. Okay, they're they're the last ones in, they're the first ones out, and they they no one knows where they are. Why? Because they they don't talk. They just boom in and out. And can we speak to me? I'm not that good of a speaker. So if you're coming just for me, you're coming for the wrong reason. Person number five, I met six weeks ago. I kid you not, and I will, I will not tell you who they are because I didn't finally figure out who they were. They introduced themselves to me, and I want you to know I've been here for almost nine months now. They introduced themselves to me as a member of Black House Baptist Church. I did not know who they were. I have not seen them. So, I had to go, hmm, that's interesting. Once you know, side note, if you're talking to me and I go, that's interesting, stop talking. <laughs> and I go, that's interesting. Go, wait, what did you not understand? Because I'm going to come, I'm going to circle back, I'm going to, I'm going to write down something and circle back around to that. Okay? So, if you're going to go, that's interesting. Why is that interesting? Let me tell you. But I had to start this whole process of going, well, wait. Well, what is it? I'm going to share with you. I'm going to share with you knowledge, okay? The wind up on this is a lot longer than probably the actual execution. Can I tell you what, your church, what our church constitution says? Okay? This is what our church constitution says as a regular member. And if you're a part of this church, this is what you, you say you agree with this. An active member. An active member is defined as one who has attended worship at least three times a month. This was whenever, this was written whenever they had Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, Sunday school. Okay? Three times a month, unless uh, provincially hindered. Work, sickness, unexpected circumstances, i.e., the pandemic. Right? This was this is this is what our church constitution says is an active member. Can I tell you what an inactive member is? Inactive members is those uh, members who, without good cause, and that's the big phrase right there, what? Without good cause. <laughs> have done what? Have not participated in the church previously required, section T1, in the previous 12 months, will be placed on an inactive role. Are the members? Yes. Are they active? No. So the person that I talked to, and I will not say their name, were they a member? Yes. Are they active? No. And I would actually tell you what I've done on the back end of that is now I'm reaching out to them trying to figure out where have they been? Why are they not coming here? Where are you going? And if you're not going to church, ooh, that's, that's, a, that's, that's interesting. <laughs> because that's, that's the problem. You see, for, we're called to be Christians. We're not called to do this life by ourselves. And what's even more important is this goes back to the lesson that I talked about a couple of weeks ago. Inside of unity, the whole reason God put us together as a church is because we need each other. We need each other. And that's what sets us apart. And that's what's exciting. And I want you to know, that's where I start all this with, like, oh, that, that kind of hurts, Pastor. I understand that, but why does it hurt? Because this is what God's word says. And I want you to know, this is, this is actually what I want you to walk away with today. I want to give it to you. Here's the whole point of the whole story. Walk away with it right now. We're going to get out in front of you. It says, if you were a Christian, God's purpose in saving you was that you might bring joy, glory to Him through the life you live in communion 
with other Christians. God saved, God saved you. Why? To bring glory to Him and to live in communion with other Christians. If He wanted to save you and He didn't want the, the community part, can, can I tell you what would happen? It's called, it's called Zap Sanctification. If, you, if we didn't need each other whenever you were saved, God would have killed you. But did he do that? No. What, else, what did he do instead? He set up a whole new establishment called the church. To do what? So that we can live in communion with other people. Ooh, that sounds tough. Wow. Amen. I don't, have you met some of you? <laughs> I've met me, and that's hard enough. Okay, my joke with Christy all the time is, look, you have to be weird. Why? Because you're living with me. This is it. You have to accept that. But that's the point, and that's the beauty of church. Let's share something else. These are the images listed in the church. Now, these are not all of them, but these are the big four, okay? And for you that are taking photos, wait, give me one more slide, okay? Um, inside of the Bible, there are four big categories or four big illustrations of what a church is. Uh, Paul refers to it as building. He loves using the word building, um, and it helps us tremendously. Uh, body, uh, book, uh, I did that one uh, a couple of weeks ago. That's from the I need you, you need me, and we need each other. Because we're all part of one body. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12 does it as well. Uh, Peter, uh, which is kind of funny, I mean, I want you to know, Peter's a fisherman. I was expecting Peter to talk about us as a school of fish, but he doesn't. What does he talk about us as? A flock. Uh, and then Paul again talks a lot about family, especially to Timothy, which makes sense because what, is, what does he talk about with Timothy? Hey, Timothy, you come from a great family. A church needs to be a great family. That's, that's a really the correlation he's trying to make there. And then in Ephesians, he also talks about it because Ephesians is a little bit different. I want you to know, if you have your Bible today, you'll be able to let him open it to the book of Ephesians because that's where we're going to be. But here's the other side of that. We have a role in all of these. Can I tell you what they are? It's a building. If we're, if we're going to say that the church is a, build, is a building, and not, again, remember this is an illustration, not the building itself, because what, what did we learn? The church is not the building. It is what? It's the family inside of it. What this is saying, though, is it's used as an illustration. Think about this. If you saw a, a, brick, a brick home, Okay? You would say that that is a home. If you saw one random brick sitting on the side of the road, would you say that that brick is part of the home? The answer is no. Why? It only makes sense when it's what? Attached to everything else. See what happens there? We're, talk, we're, we're a body. Okay? Let's, I don't know anybody in here, but if you've ever, uh, I, know, I used to know some people, uh, they had like accidents where they lost fingers and things like that. If you're, if you're one of those, you know, then God bless you. But you know, if, if you were to take, if you were to take my hand and cut it off of my body, what's going to happen to that hand? It's going to die, right? Can I, so can, I, can, can the body live apart from itself? No. Well, how about the flock? I look at I love this. Well, then we got to be sheep. I cannot, I cannot be a flock by myself. Right? Why? I need everybody else. And if, especially if God's word says that you're God's children, which it does say, then you're part of the family. And can I tell you something? Very, very much as loved as I can. Start acting like it. Start acting like part of the family. Because this is what God's called us to do. No, I am. Pastor, where are you getting up? Ephesians. Okay? I'm going to turn to Ephesians. We're going to go somewhere else, but I want to give you what Ephesians does. Now, this again is not a complete study of Ephesians. I need, I need multiple weeks to do that. But I want to give you a run through. Okay? In 
the book of Ephesians, open up chapter 1, I'm going to read one verse from there. Ephesians is great because it helps us connect our theology of what a member should be with the actual practice of it. Okay? And that's the reason why so many pastors love Ephesians, is because it really is a great combination of theology and practice. Ephesians uh, does this in Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 13. It says, in him who you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promise, Holy Spirit. So let's talk about this really quickly. What's the very foundation of all of it? Salvation. I, I want you to know, okay, I, I, it blew my mind. Um, at Tri-County, talking to other people, and I can talk about Tri-County because you all don't know that. We would, we would go through the role, role, the roles of the things, and, and we sit down and have conversations with people. Hey, so tell me about your salvation experience. And they did not have one. And yet, what? They were members of the church. That's interesting. Why? How can you be a member of a church if you don't have the same foundation? Your foundation is different. Your starting point is different. It can't exist. Everything begins at salvation. Now, we were talking in uh, Sunday school this morning. Uh, at some point in time, usually throughout every sermon, there's at least a, a salvation moment in all of them. This is where this one lands. How, how complicated is salvation? It's simply this. Romans 3.23. It says, for all have sin. All. You, me, all. But Romans 10 tells us why. If we believe in him, confess him to them, believe in our heart, confess him to the mouth, it says we will be saved. That's as simple as this. So, if you have not accepted Christ as Savior, today's a great day to do that. And that's as simple as it gets. But that's all of our starting point. Does Ephesians stop there? No. Again, remember Ephesians is, is the Bible's longest run on sentence. Now, Ephesians chapters 1, 2, and 3 should be read at one time. Just letting you know that. Um, if you ever go back and study Ephesians, that's actually how you should read them. But let's see what happens. Well, how does this happen? Oh, I need you to turn the page. Turn the page over with me. Chapter 2. Chapter 2, uh, verses number 8 and 9. What does it say about us? How, how will we say? For grace. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And it's not of your own doing or not of your own work. It is the gift of God. And not a result of works, so that no one may boast. You ever heard someone's salvation story? They ever say, they ever say hey, look what I did. No. What is, what is salvation? Look what God did. I said what God did for me. God, God died on the cross. Not only did he die on the cross, we read in 1 Corinthians this morning, right? Not only did he die on the cross, this is according to the scriptures, but he was buried, he rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. All so that we could say that we are his child. Now, if you're on, if you're on chapter 2, I need you to go down just a little bit further. So is it just you? Are you, let me, this is rhetorical, and the answer is no, okay? Are you the only Christian? Again, what's, what's the answer to me? No, thank you. Okay. Verse 19. So then you are no longer strangers. You're no longer sojourners. You're no longer aliens. But you are fellow citizens. And that's when, if you, if you underline your Bible, this is one of those lines. With the saints and members of the household of God. You're part of the family. And for some of you, I want to look at you and go, look, you're stuck with me. <laughs> you're stuck with me for eternity. Yeah. Nothing you knew about that. Nothing I knew about that. Why? Because you're not the only one. There's other fellow citizens. Now, Pastor, where does this all lead to the church? How do we get to the church? Chapter 3. Turn the page. Why did God do all of this? Chapter 3, verse number 10. So that through the church, 
search, the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. Why did God do this? Again, let me ask you. Let me go back to my first statement in this. Why did God save you? Just to do what? Bring glory to Him. And for us to do what? Live in communion. This is where it comes from. We are the church. Now, I don't know. I, I, hear, I, I hear someone, someone saw it going, well, pastor, doesn't that mean that we're all part of the big C church? Okay. Do you know what that means? When I say big C church, do you know what I mean by that? All Christians. Right? Does that mean that, does that mean that, hey, look, I mean, I'm saved, I'm part, of the, I'm part of the big family of God? Isn't that enough? Well, yeah, but that's not what's meant here. Again, you could be a good Bible scholar for me for like a few minutes. Who's Paul writing to? Christians. Christians. Huh. He's writing to, he's right, he is writing a letter. A letter. I want you to know most of the Bible, especially most of your New Testament, is reading someone else's mail. I just want you to know that. Okay? He is writing a letter to a group of believers in a location. Okay? Now, are they going to spread? Yes, they're going to spread and they're going to start new churches and they get all that. And even the letter is so good that it actually gets circulated. It's circulated to the point. <laughs> Can I tell you something? That a lot of people believe that it's actually the introduction letter that actually accompanies most of Paul's other writings. It's that important. This little book. Why? Because Paul wanted you to understand that the church is global. The church is what you do together. It's us. That is what Paul was intending. Now, did other people read it? Of course. Not the <laughs> But guess what they took away? We are the church. We have to do. We have to go. And that's exactly what Paul was trying to get to, is understanding that it is us. It's local. So again, let's ask a great question. What makes the church the church? What makes us different? What makes us different from, uh, from any other social club? What well, makes us different from, uh, you know, uh, from, the, from the guys that go up to the golf course every day? What well, makes us different? Great question. What well, makes the church the church? Um, well, they ask, uh, again, I'm going to tell you the answer is no, okay, before I ask the question. Is it, is the church, is it fundamentally about instruction? This is what this time is. Is it fundamentally about that? The answer is no. Is it fundamentally about singing? I, and I love singing. Okay, I grew up singing. Is it about that? No. Ooh, well, the pastor, what is it about? It's about a community of believers who are different from each other. And to that, we should stop right there. And you should simply say, Hallelujah. Okay? Who share only Christ in common. Some of us, I mean, I want you to look around the room. Some of you were, some of you were are from Jackson, West North Carolina. Some of you are not. Hallelujah. Some of you are from, you have different upbringings. You may have different family, come from different sizes of families, right? My mom was number seven of eight kids. You know, family reunion, my mom's side of the family was, you know, 60 people. Some of you grew up in, in maybe split homes, maybe you grew up with, with a grandma, maybe, you know. You all have different jobs. The journey for each one of you has been different. But guess what? God's called us together. Who share only Christ in common and live together in unity and love to praise God. Now, out of that, what else? What do we do? What do we do? We
We, we have instruction now. We're going to, we're in the longest book study that's ever been in history. Right? Why? Because the Christians are we're continually studying. This is instruction. Why do we do instruction? Because we love God and we love each other. We're going to try to figure out how to do this better. Together. Number two, why do we sing together? Well, it's because we love God and we love each other. We love God, we love God so much, we want to sing together. That's the reason why we sing the songs that we do. If you ever get into some of the music and some of the reasons that we, some of the theology behind it, you know, we have, we have horizontal songs that, hey, this is let us come and let us worship and those types of things. And then you have vertical songs, God, I'm so thankful for what you've done for me today. We sing those. We sing towards each other. You want to know why? To encourage each other. Because we glorify God together and we love each other. I love you enough, I want to sing good scriptural songs towards you. I love you enough that I want to study God's word together with you. And I love you enough to guess what? I'm going to invest my life with you so that we can show the world what? God's love. Which is the other part of this. A new commandment. So again, I, I apologize. I, I know we've been jumping all over the place lately. It's okay. Um, John chapter 13. And, and we read this. We've already studied this. John 13, 34 and 35. How are we, the church, to be known? How are we to be known? How do we take this to this relationship? Because we love God, we love each other. How are we supposed to take this to the world? John chapter 13, verse 34 and 35. A new commandment I give to you, this is Jesus speaking, that you love one another. Ooh. Just as I've loved you, you are also to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. I want you to know, it doesn't mean anyone, right? Who are you, who are you to love? Look around, look to your right, look to your left, look in front of you, look behind you. I love you. Why? It's what God's called us to do. It's how the church is called. That's, that's what makes us different. Do you realize that if, if it was easy, if it was just like, like we just said, okay, I'm just going to love the people that are easy to love. Now let's talk about what God's word calls us to do. It doesn't, I want you to know, even in this verse, it doesn't call us to go and love the world. It calls us to go and share the gospel with the world, but what does it really encourage us to do? Love one another. I want you to know, I can't love one another if I'm not with you. I can't. I can't be by myself. You know what? I'm just going to do, I'm going to do church all by myself. I'm just going to be a Christian all by myself. And guess what? I love the church. Do those two things make, do those two things go together? No. We are to be known because we are loving one another. Uh, the same author, a little bit later, 1 John chapter 4, verse 20. Loving God, loving one another. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother. Again, this is remember, this is this is old man John writing now, okay? Probably writing after the book of Revelation, so you know that. Because what does he say? What does he call them? He calls them little children. Little children do what? If someone says to you, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. Now that's not talking about your physical brother. That's not talking about your neighbor. That's talking about your spiritual brother. The one that's inside the church. Part of your family. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Love between Christians is not optional inside the Christian life. In fact, it's actually how God intends to show his perfect love. Go back to that Ephesians 3 verse. How is, how is God going to show his perfect love? He's going to have a church... Show love to one another. Oh, that's not hard. Yeah. Can I tell you something else? It's messy. You ever try to do, I mean, I don't know about you. I don't, I can't, I don't know how you live your life. And life's messy. Right? You have plans. Yeah, okay. I've already talked to, I've already talked to Tom. I know he had, Tom had plans this week, didn't he? Yeah. What happened? The world. <laughs> you ever have plans and they didn't work out? Yeah. You ever have, you know, life is tough, life is messy. I don't, I mean, well, as much as I even, I mean, I, I love the fact that, that Barb and uh, Howard were able to go up there. They had plans already to 
going to go spend time with family. They were going to leave, I think, Friday. They had to leave a couple of days later. Why? Because they had to go show love towards their family. But loving God and loving each other. So what are we called to do? Okay, pass the boil down. Great. I love it. Breathe with me. Take a deep breath. Just be transparent. I, I, don't, I mean, I don't know all of you personally like I know myself. I know me. Sometimes I'm hard to love. Okay? I get that. But guess what God's going to call us to do? To invest in messy. And I use like to use that word because, look, the terminology I love using is if we do unity correctly, we're living life closely, eventually we are going to sin on each other. And that's hard. And that's difficult. But guess what? It's exactly what God's called us to do. Invest in messy, difficult, God-glorifying relationships with people who have nothing in common with you but Christ. Now, if you find something else in common, guess what? <laughs> that's a bonus. I like them, you know? Hey, there's things I like. You may not like them. And that's okay. You know? Um, uh, and I can, I can talk about all sorts of things. You know, I like, I, I love watching my, my New York Yankees play right at the moment. Why? Because they're, sometimes they're either losing 15 to 1 or they're winning 9 to 1. Okay? Like, it's not, there's nowhere in between. But I like watching them. Now, some of you could, are baseball agnostics, right? Baseball exists. We will just never understand. Some of you are like, I don't care anything about sports. It's fine. And some of you might be going, you know what? You can talk about different players on the team better probably than I can. But does any of that really matter when it comes to church? The answer is no. <laughs> Nothing in common with you but Christ. Hey, you accept the Christ as Savior, you're part of my family. I'm excited. You're going to look at things differently than I do? Great. You're going to do things differently than I would do. Hallelujah. I love that. By the way, if, you happen to, if I happen to talk to you about doing some children's church stuff, I have like a, some rules, but then it's like very much you can do what you need to do. Why? Because you're going to do differently than I would do. I don't expect you to, take, to teach like I teach. I don't expect you to, to do anything the same way I do. Why? You're not me. But I do believe that with Christ is inside of you. We have something in common. We have a common goal. Number two, love one another. Oh, go back to the commandment. The pastor, I really don't like that person. Can I tell you the best piece of marriage advice that we ever received, Christy and I ever received? There's one point in time where we're going to look at each other and we're going to say, I do not like you. But I will always love you. Best piece of marriage advice I ever, ever received. Why? It's helped a lot of our arguments. Why? I, I don't like you right now, but I will always love you. Commit to each other. Are you going to commit to each other in such a way that I'm going to be here for you? I know I need you and you need me, but I'm going to be here for you. And not just in word, but in action. I'm going to be here for you. Commit to each other. Share with the conversations the joys and the burdens. The only way that we can find out the joys and the burdens of each other is by having good conversation. Good conversation means I'm talking and I'm listening. And sometimes I'm asking questions. Because I want to know deeper. I want to know, I, 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 love, I love finding out about you. I've always enjoyed being able to talk to people. Why? I want to find out what's happening. <coughs> Are you doing something that maybe I've never done before, but guess what? I want you to teach me. Maybe you've been, again, let's talk about some things that are happening. Maybe, maybe you've been on a mission trip. Been to a place I've never been. Great. Guess what I want you to do? Share with me. Share with me your experience. Why? I may never get to go. That's okay. 
confesses what, you know, how is this all working? Well, this is what God has called us to do. What is different? As Christians, we love each other. We're willing to share what we have in common to be with each other. So what's our challenge today? Will you commit today to live it out? Well, Pastor, I don't understand exactly where, where I fall at. We'll work on that. Will you commit yourself today to live out being the church? Because I want to leave you with this. Together, as a congregation, we're going to try to be committed to living out the gospel call. With people whom, with whom you necessarily have nothing in common with, except for Christ. What's the gospel call? Love one another. Love God. Share the good news with the world. That is what we are called to do. That is who we are called to be. As you please stand at this time, as they're playing just a little bit of uh, a little bit of music, I want us to take this time to pray together. I want you, whether you happen to find yourself just being, you know what, Pastor, I just need to be recommitted. Whether you go, know, Lord, I, I'm in a place where I. I I feel very strongly about the church, and I just need to, maybe it's just encouragement today, wherever you happen to find yourself, I'm going to take a second moment to pray. So pray with me, Lord, we thank you so much for this day. Lord, I thank you for, sometimes like this, where we're, there's times where we may just even have to look at each other and go, wow, this is going to be tough. But it's okay. God, you've called us to a place and called us to, to, to a lighthouse. God, may, may the day be an opportunity for us just to go, I'm going to commit myself to this group. I'm going to love this group that you've placed me here with, God, because that's what you called me to do. God, may we, may we avoid the, the fallacy. Oh, I can do it by myself. God, we need you. Just like we put us together to church, and we need to be able to again, continue to say, I need you and you need me, and we need each other. May we live this life out together. Now, Lord, if there's someone here that does not know you as Savior, may this be an opportunity for the day to be the day of salvation for them. If they have more questions about it, maybe. As we're leaving today, maybe it must be a, hey, come and grab me or grab someone else and say, could you explain this a little bit better for me? God, I thank you for all of your wonderful blessings. I thank you for this opportunity together. Lord, as we, as we end this time together, we pray for those that are not with us today. We pray for those who might be watching us on Facebook or might be having to join us in another way, God, we pray for them and pray that, that you would continue to work in their hearts just like you're working in ours. Lord, we thank you for all of your wonderful blessings for it is in your son's name we do pray.